Say, Mom and me decided that if we wanted to be right in style, we'd better get one of these here Hail Columbia Happy Land talking machines. Hi everybody. I know it's been a while since I've posted a video, but today I cut a little bit of time out and thought I'd present uh, to you um, my U.S. Grand phonograph. The U.S. Grand was one of, I believe, five models of, no, six, I'm sorry, six uh, models made by the U.S. Phonograph Company of Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, most of their uh, phonographs were made, say, from 19... Uh, 10 or 11 uh, up until 1912 so the, 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 the phonographs themselves were not made for very long. Uh, the company was uh, formed uh, by some Cleveland um, uh, wealthy Cleveland uh, businessmen who had uh, basically not much knowledge of phonographs um, but uh, they felt that it was a good uh, business to get into, so they went ahead with, and formed the company. Unfortunately, the company did not last long. Uh, Edison, uh, Edison's company uh, uh, brought them into court uh, long enough uh, where they simply went belly up in 19, late 1913, I think. Um, or maybe it was late 1912. Anyway, they weren't in business for very long, four or five years. Uh, the company made U.S. Everlasting Cylinders, which are wonderful, and they made the, um, uh, and they were, they're also found as lakeside cylinders, indestructible. Anyway, let's get a little closer here. I'll try not to break my neck as I step around some of my lighting apparatus here. And my left arm shoulder is getting tired. <laughs> so I'm just giving it a break here. Um, <clears throat> the U.S. Grand was uh, the company's most expensive internal horn model. Uh, they show up very rarely today. Uh, they had a mahogany cabinet. Um, very attractive grill. And... Um, there were several models. There were three external horn models made by the company, namely the the U.S. Um, Banner, the U.S. Opera, and the U.S. Junior. And they made three internal horn models: the U.S. Rex, and the U.S. Royal, and the U.S. Grand. Here, the U.S. Grand being the most expensive one. So let's take a look inside. First thing that you'll notice is this odd dual reproducer uh, top here. And the next thing most people notice is this odd flexible tube here that connects the horn to the reproducer. Uh, a nice innovation with the U.S. Uh, uh, phonographs is this heavy flywheel. So to stabilize uh, play, uh, reduce flutter. Uh, interesting dial arrangement here for, as you, you can turn it to the right, and it lowers the two-minute reproducer underneath this side of the housing. Turn it to the counterclockwise, basically, and it lowers the four-minute reproducer underneath this side of the assembly. Okay, Big problem with the US phonographs is that they made their reproducers this whole assembly here as well as the carriage here and underneath of pot metal. Pot metal was basically zinc, lead, and copper, uh, maybe some other metals uh, mixed together in a pot, basically, hence the name. Uh, these metals have a low uh, melting point, so they're easy to cast. Cheap and easy to cast, and so that's why they were used. 
sadly as time passes these uh, pot metal parts uh, suffer with intergranular corrosion uh, the metal itself expands forms cracks and eventually the part either distorts so badly that it's unusable or it, it falls apart uh, when you try to use it so anyway um, that's a little bit of background before we go to the playing the selection I wanted to tell all of my viewers or ask all of my viewers that if you have any models of this phonograph made by the US uh, phonograph company uh, and you'd like to sell it or trade it uh, with me uh, send me a, uh, a private message through YouTube uh, or, or put it, put a comment down below and uh, you know let me know and uh, hopefully we can uh, strike a deal um, doesn't matter to me if it works as long as it's mostly complete okay I just have an interest in these oddball uh, US phonographs okay they're also found under Lakeside brand name okay cylinder I'm going to play is a two minute indestructible uh, made by the uh, you, uh, by the cylinder uh, indestructible cylinder record company of Albany New York and this is um, you'll never know until you're married by Bob Roberts it's a fun comic song so here we go hope you enjoy it folks and as always thanks for stopping in there's a long lever back here that turns it on you can see the the belt and the flywheel turning and this lowers the stylus in a position the two minute stylus here we go some people go so blindly into marriage they can only see themselves as bride and groom they never think about the baby carriage they all in the little furnished room the wedding ring means joy to them forever now i thought that myself and saw it through but when the wedding bells were rung, I discovered I was stung. That's the reason why I say to you, you will find when the knot is tied and you have a bride. Love is blind, but a wife is very watchful when you're married. I've got one. When I want some fun, see the chance I run. For she's here, there, and everywhere. But you'll never know till you get married. Now, Gurley thought her husband was a dandy when he stood behind the counter at the store. He bought her lovely violets and candy. At least she did about a month or more. So when he asked her hand in matrimony, why, she gave it to a handsome dragon's clerk. But just as soon as they were wed, this is what her hubby said. Darling, you will have to go to work. You will find when you wear a thing called a wedding ring. Love is blind, but your eyes will soon be opened when you're married. You're forlorn. Everything in pawn, all your money gone. Overnight, Mary is a pleasant dream, but you'll never know till you get married. And there it is. You'll never know till you get married. Played on a U.S. Grand phonograph made by the U.S. Phonograph Company of Cleveland, Ohio.